All right, starting my second ever uh, narrated build or build with audio, decided to go with a uh, butterfly model. This is uh, the Buckeye butterfly, uh, but which has been discontinued. There are several other ones. They all build pretty much the same way. Uh, the currently only the Monarch butterfly is actually uh, continued manufacturing, but you can still find numerous of them on eBay and other locations. Um, but for this one, I have the Buckeye butterfly, and I'm going to walk you through the entire build process using a limited set of tools here, um, a pen, uh, tweezers, and this is going to be what I'm going to use to remove the parts from the sheet. These are just toenail clippers or fingernail clippers that behave like scissors. I bought them at Walmart. Uh, not very expensive. That's what I originally started with using. Uh, nowadays I use uh, what are called flush cutters and they have a flush meeting side where the cut uh, happens and that's kind of what you have with a pair of uh, toenail clippers actually but uh, or fingernail clippers but this is curved and uh, has some thickness out here that makes it not as good at getting in to uh, cut the little triangles anyways um, a lot of people I've seen they'll just tear off the top but I am uh, I don't know weird but I always open mine up by cutting with a hobby knife. That's one more tool. I didn't mention a hobby knife here. Uh, these are very useful for uh, many things. One of which I find very important is uh, aligning tabs, helping tabs go where you want them, which is an important thing in this particular build for one thing. So anyways, this build is unique, um, uh, the butterflies, in that inside the package there are no instructions you can see there because the instructions are on the back unfortunately um, you can probably see the damage right here uh, where I got this from they put a sticker right here over the final step of the instructions which is just kind of frustrating and one of the things that makes me not a fan of having the instructions on the packaging but uh, we're going to put that here as our reference for the instructions. And uh, one of the unique things about the butterflies, along with this instructions, is they don't have a uh, identification for the parts on the sheet uh, 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 in the instructions. Instead, they actually etch each of the uh, instruction, uh, each of the part numbers on the sheet. And I just dropped that. So, anyways, we're going to come over here to the instructions. And uh, instructions normally aren't quite like this. They're more linear, but this kind of has a little uh, odd instructions. But we'll go through it anyways. Um, what I always do is with this sort of situation is I use the numbered parts because the parts usually are numbered in the order that you'll use them. So we're going to do part one, two, and three. We're going to join them together first, and that will make this bottom wing section. And then we'll put parts four, five, and six together here, and that will make the upper wing section. And then we're going to attach it to the uh, part seven, the body. Um, and I'm going to deviate from this just slightly uh, it does not show bending those sides up at all, but it can be very beneficial to do that. Well, I'll, you'll see when I get there. Then we build the rest of the body, um, part eight. We attach it to the body that's there. And finally, at the end, we are going to bend those wings up. You can bend them to whatever position you want. Um, and we are going to twist the legs, which it does not says, bend the butterfly wings, legs, and intended to give it a natural look. The legs 
I learned after my first one, I tried doing bending. It does not work well, but if you twist them, it puts them in the right position as I think they're supposed to be. Anyways, we'll get all the way there. But for now, uh, we have several things. On this uh, build, we have a unique situation where most of these tabs around the wings don't actually go through slots. They fold over uh, another part to hold it in place, which can be kind of frustrating. And then there are some slot uh, tabs that do go through slots in the body. And in this case, it tells you you should twist those. All the others are folded. Uh, in a real build, or not a real build, in a more complicated build, you'll see a mix of folding and twisting in various uh, locations, and it's marked with symbols. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into this with uh, part getting out part one. Now, when you're working with something similar to a flash cutter, kind of like this, I take the side where it meets together, and I have a moth visiting me. Uh, sorry if the moth gets in the camera. Um, they really like the bright lights I use for filming um, and for building because having lighting is very useful. Good lighting. Anyways, uh, back to this. I take the side that's the flush where it's been cut rather than the sloped side, and I put that against the part edge. And hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. I take this and I place it into the in around this triangle and I push it down against the part so I'm as close as possible and then I squeeze and you'll often hear a click and that's when you've you've, you've broken through the metal I'm gonna go around the entire part and do that for each point And there we go. And now we have part one free, so I'm going to put that down. For this, I'm going to also need parts two and three, so I locate two, which is right here. Um, one of the things you want to be careful about when, you, when you're placing this is you, with these colored ones, or with any build, you can scratch the metal if you hit it with a tip. Uh, so you want to be careful while lining it up not to scratch the parts. Um, although, I, and I have definitely scratched some parts, and uh, most of the time I, I've had people, you know, I've suggested it and other people have suggested it. You just call it battle damage, um, or uh, that works really well with, like, a military vehicle. But, you know, in the butterfly, it got into a fight and survived a predator trying to eat it or something. You can have a little fun with your explanations of, of why things didn't turn out the way you had hoped they would. Um, I'm going ahead here, as you can see, and removing part three completely now. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down and set this aside. And we're going to start talking about these tabs that we're folding up here. Um, one thing to be aware of before I get to that, is we do have some little sharp things right where it was attached. you you got to be careful of those. Um, the more traditional uh, flush cutters will actually get closer in, and they're designed for cutting metal, so they'll be able to get those a little better. Um, but again, I wanted to, to demonstrate this with, with the bare minimum tools that, that you can work with. Um, technically, you can twist the parts out. I don't recommend it. Get If you've got something like this around the house or uh, happen to have flush cutters for whatever reason, that's a much better approach. Um, moving on. The very first step here is uh, to connect these together. And all around the outside, it shows folding the, folding the tabs up to a 90-degree angle. Um, and we're going to do that with the tweezers here. I much prefer, uh, if I'm doing this, to use something like a very uh, fine tip needle nose pliers um, because you can get you can get more precision control. But again, this can be done with a uh, 
pair of tweezers. I'm trying to make sure I do not move outside this, the, the view of the camera. I apologize if I do. Um, it's very tempting to do these two at once right here, but I'm not going to do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and it's very important with this model that you get these tabs as close to the actual edge as possible folded. You don't want to have any of it sticking out and then folding up. You want to get right up on the edge. So I'm going to come way up close and give it a beginning fold. And then I'm going to look and see how close I've gotten to the edge because I want to make extra sure I get it right. Fold it up there. And it's extremely important with these three in the middle um, that you get as close as possible because they are what you use here in this part when you're joining it to the body. They have to... So bah. Sorry. My tongue gets ahead of me sometimes. They're what is going to be connecting this into the body. And that is a very, very uh, precise arrangement of those tabs that requires you to get that as close as you possibly can. So these are the most important ones. So I guess I should say you probably don't want to start with these like I just did. Um, if this is your first time building uh, one of these butterflies. Uh, but I have built all eight of them before. This is a repeat build um, that I chose to, to do so that I could have this as a resource for uh, future builders, for people that are getting started. I wanted to have uh, this option for you. Uh, what I just did there, I, I noticed I had a little bit of a sharp point there where I had um, clipped off and it was pointing down. I just squeezed it flat with this, just FYI. So anyways, I'm going to work my way around the outside here. And now it says to fold it up at a full 90 degree angle. Um, we're going to be setting these parts into here. And I've found that if you get that more really, really tight around these outsides and get it perfectly up, straight up in a 90 degree angle, sometimes it's hard to get these parts in. Uh, so I tend to, to stop just shy of 90 degrees. I don't know. Let's see if you can see that. But it's just a bit shy there. Anyways, keep working our way around. We get the next one here. And I just went full tilt without with that one without checking. And I actually went a little over. So I'm just going to barely, very gently fold it back. You don't want to fold a lot of things back and forth um, on these builds because you can very easily break tabs off if you keep folding the same point or even break parts across a seam. So you have to be very slow and gentle if you're ever unfolding something you've already folded. Go ahead and grab this one. As you can see, this time instead of going straight on, I'm going to come from the side. That's another option. And I don't always feel like I get as close when I do that, but that's what my hand went to do on this one, so I think it turned out all right. Uh, go back again to this. And one of the things that, that you'll find when you're folding tabs like this is you'll get right up to the edge. You think, I'm as close as I need to be. And then when you fold it, you have some left over. And it's because you're pivoting on the top edge here, if you're doing that. And the bottom edge is pivoting out. So you're actually uh, losing some distance on the back side when you're folding it up. So you actually want to go just a smidge past what you think you need to do and fold it. And that'll get you right on the edge. Now you get to these. These are like, okay. Okay, how do I get in there? And you'll, you'll encounter this sort of thing. This is definitely a scenario where I will approach with the side. And I'm left-handed, if you haven't figured that out. And uh, so I have... You'll have to uh, kind of arrange things and uh, the parts so they, they feel as natural to you as possible. Um... I find myself sometimes 
uh, readjusting how I'm gripping something several times before I actually do the folds or the, the secure the tabs because I think it'll be comfortable one way and I don't find it end up, uh, end up not feeling that way. Now this tab, this tab drives me nuts because I cannot get the uh, tweezers in there because they're too big. Um, and I can try to go this way, but then I'm hitting it at an angle and that just makes me feel a little uncomfortable. So there are a few different things you can do. Um, one of the things I've done from time to time is I come in here and I just kind of squish the tweezers together to make a flat edge. And then I'll just press a little from the backside, bracing the front with my thumb, press a little from the backside. And let's see if I can make sure you can see what I did there. How to, I think maybe you can start to see it there. Oh, my thumb's in the way. This is not working. Um, I gave it the ever slightest uh, tilt up there to kind of start pushing, but it's not very close into the edge. But now I can come in and get a better, even though I'm still angled, uh, kind of a into the crack. I can get a better grip that's closer down without fighting these edges. And hopefully I can work on this until I get it straight up and down. And you can see it's pretty good there. You can see it's slightly over and it's slightly bent over. So what I can do is I can put it flat on here, and this is a trick I like to do a lot of times if I don't know if I've got something up at a 90 degree angle. I'll put it flat on the surface and then just, excuse me, use my kind of my natural feeling of flat versus a table. Everybody kind of develops that uh, sort of sense to some degree, and I will try to straighten it to that flat using the table as reference. When it's up in the air, it's hard sometimes to recognize when you're floating uh, strangely. So now we're going to pick up part number two, which is actually this one here. And you can see the shape matches up nice and well. We're going to slide it in there. We're going to get it behind the three, inside the three tabs here. And then you can see, maybe you can see, I've got a little bit of this edge up here showing, so I'm going to twist it until the shape lines up perfectly. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to use the outside, flat outside edge of these tweezers, which is another trick I like. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to press and then rotate around to get this to kind of lip over, that, that tab right there to lip over. And then I can squish it flat. I open it up and I just squish it. Squish, squish as flat as I can. And we do that to all the tabs, all the way around. So again, I'm pressing firmly at the base and then just kind of rotating around and then squish it flat. Press right at the base of the tab, rotate it so it curls it around, get that nice and tight up in there, squish it flat. Do the same with this other wing. Here, again, make sure, and this is something I forgot on a few of my builds, make sure you line up this, the two parts together as best you can before you go to start securing the tabs. Because if you secure one of those tabs and it's off angle, the, 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 the parts don't line up, uh, you run the chance of scratching uh, the surface as you're trying to straighten it or having a loose part of the wing. Um, and it's just not fun. Uh, of course, I'm a, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'll squish that over and flatten it. Okay, so now we've we've finished the lower wing here, and we're going to repeat the process with the upper wing or the forward wing, whatever, however you want to think of it. So I'm going to go around and remove these 
And one of the things I like to do with my regular builds is I've got a little sheet of magnetic tape um, and I actually go ahead and cut out all of my parts beforehand before I start the build so I don't have to uh, stop in the middle of the build process and go hunting on a sheet for a part. Um, especially when you get multi-sheet parts with lots of little pieces, it, it can be to me, it can be kind of disruptive and, and, and throw my, my, um, throw off the emperor's groove, so to speak. Uh, so I like having it all ready to go. And as soon as I'm done attaching or working on a section, I just reach over and pull off the next strip off of a magnetic, uh, strip of tape. I think I should strip too many times in there. I don't know. Anyways, here we go. We've got those all off again. We're going to go around. This one, blessedly, a lot easier to get in here on this tab right there. Fold all of these up. Um, on this one, it's actually hard not to do the two at the same time because you can't uh, avoid it. So I'm going to be extra careful to uh, hopefully do this right. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. Um, those do, those aren't as tight up as I would like them to be, but I can show you what we can do once we go to attach this when that happens, because that will happen. It is not easy to get them all right up on the edge like you want to, and you, sometimes you can fold them back down and redo it. But again, that's a scenario where you got to be careful how much you do that, or you might lose a tab. Um, just, just speaking from personal experience and yes, I have broken many a tab off. Um, I've broken many a model, uh, and hopefully you can benefit from all my experience breaking models and repairing them because I'm stubborn. Um, so I'm speeding up a little here because you've already seen this whole process. Um, don't want to bore you too much. You can skip ahead in the video, of course. Uh, I will try to see if I can put some chapters in to the video to, to make it easy to skip around to various things. I just don't know what exactly I'll label them. Um, so on this one, this side is four and the other side is five. I don't know why they switched that back and forth. Um, one thing I find interesting, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hard to see, but they actually have a little indent on this part around the edges where the tabs are going to fold up over. There's the slightest little bit of an indent to line up with the tabs. Um, I don't know why it's only in that spot because um, it's not there on the tabs on the very far outside. I find it interesting, but it's there. Uh, pardon me, my dog is barking. I don't know if you heard that, but he's a very uh, vocal puppy. One of my dogs. Well, both of them are, but one of them's outside, one's in here. Ooh, I can see that sharp edge kind of shining there, so I'm going to drop my tweezers. No, I'm going to try and squish it flat. Um, it is not uncommon to, uh, uh, which I almost did. You can see the giant indent in my finger there. I almost punctured myself with one of these tabs. Um, so be careful not to brace uh, the parts or the sheet or what you're assembling with a tab against your skin because it will just puncture you and it smarts. Uh, oh, there we go. That one kind of got caught on the other side because I had folded it a little too much before assembling everything. Just like I said, it's possible to do. Uh, but we were able to get it in. And again, go around and squish, kind of bend, roll over and then squish flat, roll over and squish flat. And now we have two sets of wings. The next step is to take 
uh, part seven, which has the antenna and the upper or the top of the body. It's shown here this way because we're, we're assembling it upside down. We're going to pop that out. Now, one thing I will advise you is whenever you're removing these parts, uh, when you're clipping, even with the uh, flush cutters, when you're, you're clipping these points, you're going to put some extra force or space in between and you can end up bending the parts. Um, there are different techniques you can use to avoid that as much as possible, but one of the things I always pay attention to, right here, you can see this is a tab that's attached to this thin antenna. I don't want to start with that one because if I start with that one, that antenna is going to get nice and bent up. So I start over here with these, which are more solidly attached or solid sections that they're attached to. Furthermore, if I if I start with this one, it's got two brace points opposite of it. I'm pushing in the middle, so I might still t uh, cause uh, this part to bend. So I'll actually start with this one over here because it's only got one part that is going to be one uh, attachment point that it's going to be pushing against on that side. And that's just a, a trick I've learned to help me uh, not bend uh, pieces as badly as, as they might end up. And you can see the way it distorts everything here. It's actually still pushing against there. And I'm not sure I actually got it completely cut off. Um, and that's because these are, I think these might actually be the ones I used for the longest time and they've gotten dulled from use on metal. Um, so I, I would have to replace it, uh, eventually, but I ended up replacing it again, like I said, with flush cutters. Anyways, now that I've gotten that one off, I'm going to move over here. And when I cut this, it doesn't put nearly as much strain on that uh, anchor or a, a snip point as it would if I was if I had this piece over here attached still. Now, I still am going to run the risk of causing this to bend some because I'm pushing in here and it's going to try to push on either side of those, uh, either side of it. So we may end up with some damage, but hopefully it's less than it would have been if I had started there. So I pull this out and looking, it did twist it a little, but I think we're okay. I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of flatten it back out. You can put it down on something and just press. Uh, sometimes if I get a really damaged part, like if, geez, drop something. If I get a really uh, damaged sheet that's been uh, warped in the mail or gotten kind of dinged up, I'll even put a part down and get something like a large battery and I will roll it back and forth across it at different angles to flatten it back out. But for now, this came out pretty well and we're going to go ahead and move forward with this, except we're not. I lied. We're going to take a brief moment um, and this is a, a trick you may or may not uh, choose to use or, or, or uh, adopt, but I often like to pre-crease folds that might be hard to get to later so that when it comes time to actually fold it, I've already kind of broken the fold in and I've gotten that initial past the initial resistance and it, it weakens the metal a little at that point. Um, again, if you do it too much back and forth, you'll break it off. But by doing this, it makes life easier when I come back later to do it. I don't have to fight that initial thing when it's at an awkward position or hard to reach area. Um, so you'll see here, I folded these two sides just, I mean, just barely folded them up. And then I folded these two flaps at the front, just barely again. And then back here at the back, there's this little square. And that one we can go ahead and just fold all the way up because there, we're not attaching any tabs next to it. But back here, we've got some tabs we're going to need to deal with when we attach these wings. 
and attaching those wings will also help you see another benefit to getting these up is once we get these wings attached and uh, it's very important to pay attention here you're going to attach the lower set before the upper set and that is called out uh, in the text there so we're going to go ahead and grab that and when i put this on hopefully i can oh wow i got lucky you can see i think let's see if you can there are three tab slots there that line straight up with the three slots tabs here and then there's another three forward of that this is the for the forward wings or and this is for the back wings or rear wings whatever you want to call it and once you put this in place and and uh, get it secured those flaps would be flush to the wings those flaps that I folded up and so getting in there to start that fold it's very likely you might scratch the metal or have a, a tough time getting in there so anyways uh, one thing you're going to want to do at this point and it's going to be frustrating is you want to squeeze get this as closed as possible get these tabs as far through as possible and sometimes the best way to do that is to only worry about one side and then the other and you can put it flat on your table surface take your tweezers and press down so you are mashing down that body part onto there and then grab the, the tab as close as you can with your fingers with, with the tweezers and then just twist and I'm going to do it on the other side the, there are two tabs up here I'm going to do both of them press it down and twist and by pressing it flat against the table um, I'm going to bring this back here so there's more contrast you can see I've gotten it really close to flush as I can to flush but if you look at the back side now that's popping up a nice little gap but since this side's nice and flush and, and secured we can now come back here to this back one press it down flat again and twist it and now we've got that good and secure that is not coming off um, and you can see now on the back that that side doesn't have a gap either the next step is to move on to the front wings which is somewhat frustrating because when you go to put it on there it's layered on top of the back wings and so it's really hard to get these flush uh, get the back tab of this as tight as possible because you're you're forced to be somewhat spread uh, pushed away anyways we're gonna go ahead and try and line this up and I got lucky again and this uh, it, it did line up but uh, if you've had trouble getting this flat up along the edge here you can bend them a little farther in to try and help you line up and 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 by farther in I mean you know at a slight angle like this instead of the straight 90 out you just go in just a smidge until you can line it up and if you're still having trouble lining stuff up my advice is to get one tab just get one of your tabs or preferably the two tabs at the front get those in in place and then get yourself something like a hobby knife or something very thin but sturdy and you can try and reach in and push the the other tab and line it up with the slot by pushing with the the flat not sharp side of the um, hobby knife the flat side and kind of tweaking it into place um, that's a technique I use quite a bit so again we're going to put this down I'm going to press it as hard as possible there and do a twist and for some reason this time I twisted that way look what I did to that poor antenna everybody makes mistakes Bob Ross would call it a happy little mistake accident my wife just corrected me happy little accident she's right 
she's my better half, my smarter half. Um, so there's those front two tabs have been secured now, and then the frustrating one, because I'm not going to be able to get it as tight as the rest, but I'm going to gosh darn try. Uh, back here, press it as hard as you can and grab it and twist it. And as hard as I tried, it's still got a bit of a gap back there because these are layered over each other. But that's okay. We want that layering. It makes it look like a butterfly. So again, now we've got that done. It is time to come in here. And uh, moving on to the next step here, they show you going ahead and forming out um, the, the part eight here. But I like to go ahead and finish up with this. Uh, this fold that I started earlier because I just like to, to get everything nice and neat and even even as I, I, I appear to have done it a little too slight myself um, so I was risking scratching that there uh, but you know your mileage may vary as they say uh, and and part of my problem is I was coming in on this one where it's extra tight but if I come in from here Maybe I can get it going. That's in the front wing area. It's got a little extra room because, again, the layering. There we go. And you'll see I actually bent this tab. Let's see if I can show it. This tab right here actually got bent in a little, so I'm going to squeeze it flat because we want that straight up and down for when we attach the rest of the body to it. And uh, I will just do some general straightening because it looks like I bent some of this a little funny. So I'll just go and squish it with my tweezers to try to flatten it out. Then I'm going to look at these flaps at the front. And you'll see there's the kind of trapezoid beneath the head of the guy there. Oh, look, I scratched up with the tabs. I scratched that up there. That's something you can actually address if it happens to be on something black, with something like a black Sharpie, it actually works. It kind of hides it. Anyways, uh, there's your trapezoid there. And you you try to take these flaps here. These are the two flaps that are at the front of this. And we're going to twist those just a smidge so that they match up to that body, to, to the neck. Or front of the thorax or whatever the heck it's called on a bug. Um, and it looks like I may have bent, uh, folded this up a little too far. You see me trying to tweak it back and forth and adjust it. But there you have it. Um, I'm ever not satisfied. So I'm constantly tweaking things. And, uh, and that might be why I end up breaking so many models. Who knows? Um, for now, we can put that aside and come back here to remove this. Uh, body part, which uh, uh, one of these things drives me nuts. It's attached twice on these teeny tiny thin little leg things, and uh, 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 obviously I'm going to start down here with the thicker area, but then I have to get one of those before the other one, but hopefully they are far enough apart in the actual part. That was redundant sounding. That it uh, they won't get too bad tweaking. Oh, that did not look good um, from snipping it out. So here, let's take this out and look. That leg's caught up inside the sheet. And as you can see, I did damage that leg after all. So I'm going to take my tweezers here. And I'm going to try and straighten that leg out a little, maybe. Maybe I'll use my fingers. I don't know. But eh, it's battle damage. We got those ready to go. Now, back to the building out the body. You can see the little blue lines. This is something you'll see in a lot of instructions. There's little blue lines showing you how you're supposed to fold something. You can see it's over here at the front. It's got the blue line showing, uh, shaping the head. And I'll show you what these are talking about here. Um, this is going to end up attaching right here. And so you have 
two segments here that will come down this trapezoidal neck section and then cap it off underneath the head. So real quick, we can just grab this here, give it a little, and, and you can use the, the model to see, okay, am I close? And just kind of say, okay, there's that angle. Now let's look at what angle I put that at. Is that close? That's something I do a lot. And then the front is just, that's going to be pretty much straight up and down um, from the body. Although if you look closely, the body here is actually sloped down. So I'm wrong. It's not straight up and down. I need to come a little past that straight up and down point. We're going to come back to these back sections. You have long sections like this that need to be folded. One nice thing you can do is see if you have a pair of long needle nose pliers. You can grab that and fold it. Um, it it's great uh, if you have that, but I, I'm trying to keep things uh, more basic here. Um, keep everything to... to a beginner level of tools. So I am folding this over here and this is going to line up with right here with this back uh, kind of tail slash butt section of the butterfly. Pardon my use of the word butt if that offends you. Um, I couldn't think of what else to say. And some, okay, I just did some, sometimes when they're, you know, it'd be hard to get in here and fold this, this end down. I'll actually just uh, come in and use a fingernail um, with something narrow like that. Sometimes you can get away with just using your finger fingernail to fold something over. And right there on the end is a, a flap, uh, a slot, <sighs> flap, that this, the tab on the tail is going to come through. And it's now at an angle that is not necessarily uh, helpful for this uh, tab coming up and sometimes I will take uh, I don't know if you can see this or not but the very tip of this exacto knife has broken off and that became a very useful thing uh, because I can slide it right into that slot and I've got it now where it's barely sticking through and then I can kind of twist it and it actually will bend right at that slot. So that slot now is straight up and down, which will match up to this tab here. And by having this on the inside, when I do that bend, I'm keeping that slot from collapsing because I have tried folding slots with the tweezers before, and it has actually closed the slot up and made it so I couldn't get the tab through. And that's not helpful. Um, the final uh, bit of, of, of direction here is this blue line here, which I should have done earlier, not final, is right at the apex, the joint between the tail and the central body. You bend that just a smidge um, so that, that, that you have a, a bend in the body, uh, because otherwise it just won't go together right. Um, and, you know, there's probably actually a bend in the body somewhere around there in an actual butterfly. Because Middle Earth people know what they're doing when they design these models. All right, so now I'm trying to line up the tabs to the slots. And you'll see here, or maybe you can't see, I, ho I hope you can. This tab is lined up into its slot. This tab is lined up to its slot, but this tab isn't. And I'm going to go ahead and use my ex hobby knife, exacto knife here. I'm going to come over and I'm going to apply just a little bit of force to shift that tab over. And I'm applying a little bit of force with my finger here to try to sink that home. And it appears I pushed it too far over. So now I'm coming on the inside and pulling it back out some. And it's just kind of a game of how do we line this up? Sometimes you have to go crosswise. Sometimes you have to wonder if you're losing your mind. I see the tab. 
go in your hole. Pardon me for being quiet. I'm trying to concentrate because it's fighting me. Okay, this might be a scenario where the slot is just being a butthead. And sometimes you can stick the tip in like I did uh, into the slot, the tip of the X-Acto knife into the slot and wiggle it a little bit. And you can actually widen the slot a little to make it a little more cooperative. And we're going to hope that that helps. And instead of starting out with having this end uh, tab secured, you know what is causing me part of my problem? Is having that tip up there folded so close because uh, it's causing a leverage issue. It's causing an anchor up here that is preventing this from lining up. And guess what? That is giving me alignment problems. So now I do believe that's lined up. It's not. I do not know why this is giving me so much trouble. Oh, there. Nope. It went on the outside. <sighs> Well, here I am proving that no matter how good you may think you are, you can still always screw up. I'm trying to help you learn how to build these things, and apparently I'm having a lot of trouble. Sometimes when you do have a trouble with slot, it helps to take it off other slots and start with that tab slot, and then align other stuff and see if that goes better, which is what I'm doing now. Hopefully, and there it goes. That was what I needed to do. Now, before I secure those, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I can get this slotted on the end of the tail. And I'm probably blocking that from view. I apologize. Anyways, I like to make sure I can get everything lined up at the same time if possible, before securing tabs, because you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you can't get it lined up because you've already secured some of the tabs. So now in this scenario, it says that you, uh, when you put a tab through a hole, you, you twist it, but I don't like having that uh, sticking out on the bottom of this butterfly. So I will actually take my tweezers, I, I will kind of bend it over a little bit and then take my tweezers on both sides, brace it against the back here and gently flatten that tab down. And when you do that, you get a nice flush tab there and I think it looks a lot better um, than a twisted tab. And I think you can sort of see what I'm talking about there. It's not sticking out. Uh, and here out on the tail end, you can do one of two things. You can fold it out for a really secure hold, um, curl it back over the end, or you can fold it this way. It's not as secure, but I think it looks better, so that's what I do. And this is not a point of weakness in the model. It's not a structural point, and so I'm okay with that not being super strong. And we come back to the front, and we're going to look at the neck, and you can see here on this side I'm okay. Um, this side flap is where it should be. On this side, it seems like I've folded it in a little too much. So I reach in with my hobby knife and kind of wedge it back out. Then squish this flat and squish the front flat. And now we've got everything put together into a single joined model. And it's time to style it. And I really like these uh, butterflies because they let you give it your own special character, if you will. You can have a butterfly with its wings folded all the way up, or with them mostly flat, or somewhere in between. 
um, just however you want. And and when you had when they had multiple butterflies models, and they still you know like I said you can still get some of them. You can do them at various uh, uh, arrangements. Some of them folded all the way up. Some of them just a little. Some of them almost flat. And so this one, I'm going to go ahead and go with kind of just a middle of the range there. Um, you want to keep the sheets, the the wings themselves flat because butterflies don't have curved wings; they have flat wings. And then we come to the legs, and this is where I was telling you about it says fold, but what you really want to do is twist. There's a black painted side, and the uh, the back side is silver. Uh, what you want to do is twist it, grab it right up against the body, and twist it so that the black side goes forward. And we're going to do that for all six of the legs. So here are the three on this side. Flip around. Now I'm going to be twisting the other direction because I'm on the other side. But again, it's still black side towards the front of the butterfly. And and that that's to get that uh, arch of the, the, the leg to be up. Um, or in this case, down, since I'm holding him upside down. And we're going to twist all of these. And then the final thing is to just grab it with your finger, kind of, and tweak them down so that they're more towards the, more like feet sticking down uh, from the butterfly. Now this will take you a lot of tweaking to get the butterfly to balance because they are very front heavy. Um, or back, no, they're very back heavy. And so the front legs, you're going to want to actually have them a little lower down. No, a little higher up and the back legs lower down. See, I keep getting confused. Uh, so that when you put it down, and, and this is, this is to taste, of course, you can have it sitting on its, its, uh, tail. But uh, I like to have them, and that poor leg looks all beat up. And I will sometimes come back and make sure that it's it's a nice, good uh, connection or angle in there. And uh, you can you don't have to have it quite as wide. You can uh, do it however you want. I just made it so it's standing up taller here. Um, because I was curious how that would look. And again, in this scenario, you, you take the front ones and spread them out a little more so they're, they're, it's taller in the back than the front. And let's see, nope, still not enough. So we'll do a little more tweaking. And like I said, this can take a lot of tweaking. Now it's way too far forward. Doesn't that seem that, you know? Well, I don't know. You can't see it from the angle I'm seeing it. But uh, anyways, I could sit here fiddling with this for quite some time trying to get it to a position that I liked. Um, I'm not going to make you sit through that. Um, you can you can do that with your, your own build. Um, the final step here is you can add your own unique curvature for the antenna. Um, had fun building a butterfly with my daughter, and she did her antenna swooping uh, almost into a curl coming up off the body. And I have some with it down, some with it up, and various things. Um, I like to use something like a pen. Uh, or a rounded object. Um, I use drill bits, batteries, whatever. For here, I'm, I'm using a pen, just a basic big, big pen. And um, I'm going to go with a sharp curve up. 
near the head for this. I don't know why, I'm just doing this on the fly. So we're going to do a, a sharp curve up, and then we're going to come back on the other side, and up here at the tip, we're going to curl, curve that back down. Um, and I'm going to put just a smidge of a curve in the middle, because, you know, not a lot of things in nature are just straight, straight. Um, so I, I like to try and, and be sort of accurate there, but as you can see, I'm butchering this because I'm talking and doing it at the same time. Um, uh, one thing you can do is, you know, they, they use uh, these antenna as feelers, as, as sniffers and whatnot. You could actually have one that doesn't match the other if you want, um, as if it's, it's using that one to investigate something. You know, it's, it's really up to you what you want to do. And I love that about these butterflies. So here's my, my wonderfully odd and probably not balanced. Yeah, see, it keeps wanting to fall back. Um, Buckeye butterfly. And I hope that maybe my talking throughout this was not annoying and it was helpful and maybe shared some tips that might be useful to you. I don't know. Uh, oh, so close. But uh, if, however it goes, I hope uh, I haven't annoyed you. But uh, there you go. I'm glad you came along for the adventure if you made it this far. Good luck with your build if you go at one. Uh, I don't really know how to end this video, so I'm just going to say goodbye.